think there was a concern about scoring off the bench. And then you see how this bench has played over this five-game stretch. Miles McBride in particular, strong again last night against Portland. I think he had 16. He had the four threes against Philadelphia. He had said, if I get minutes, consistent minutes, I'm confident in myself. I'm going to be able to get the job done and keep this going. And he showed that so far. CP, Miles McBride, has he impressed you? So, uh, last night, so far, I mean, as long as he's shooting the ball well, it's always going to be a good night for him because you know he's going to bring his defensive intensity. And one thing about McBride, even though the minutes are going to come, uh, you know, uh, kind of inconsistently as it has throughout his career as a Nick, he always comes ready. He's, he's prepared. He comes ready and he plays hard. And so to see him shooting the ball well last night was, was certainly a positive. You have to like that. Now, is he going to be the playmaker that quickly was at, at times here for the Knicks? No, and so it's going to be left to be seen how they help the bench going forward between now and the trade deadline. But as long as he's out there, I think the Knicks have to look to provide the playmaking around him, meaning lineups with Julius Randle, lineups with Randle and Isaiah Hartenstein, with Josh Hart, with Quentin Grimes, guys that can put the ball on the floor, help playmake, and so McBride is not relied upon to do everything for that second unit. So as long as he's going in there, he's doing his job as a, as a 3 and D player, he's, he's going to be a, a, a great fit for this bench. It's just going to be left to be seen how much confidence do they have in him to uh, generate offense for this unit because – as you get into the thick of things in the second half of the season and on to the playoffs, they're going to need more experience in, in that role. Yeah, Brendan, I mean, looking, we're going to look ahead in a little bit to see what may be coming next in terms of adding to the bench. But the way you see things right now, the way you've seen Miles McBride over his three seasons, uh, do you feel like he can step in that role for them, be a regular rotation player for a Nick team that wants to do, uh, do a lot of things in the playoffs this spring? Well, a couple of ways to look at this. Number one, the bench so far is two for five in the five games. They were terrific in Philadelphia, obviously, 49 points. Then against Portland, weaker bench, young guys. They played very well last night. The other three games, they barely scored to what is a normal NBA bench. So they're averaging 29 points a game in these five games, which is under the 33 points they usually average so far this year. So can you continue to get good production, get good numbers out of it? Well, defensively, you know McBride is going to be incredibly competitive. Tom likes that. He's going to stick his nose in there. He's going to try to body you up. The question becomes in certain matchups, after the first dribble, can he contain the ball and keep the ball out of the paint? I think there are a lot of people, Nick fans, media, whatever, who think he's some sort of a shutdown defender. He's not, and he's small. But he is very competitive, and that's great. On the flip side, offensively, okay, we all have to worry about his shot. Our team's leaving him open or not leaving him open. But something that's been good his entire career is his assist to turnover. It was good when he was a rookie. It was like 9-1 to one at one point. Right now it stands at 6-1. to one. So when you're searching out with the bench group, whether Randall's in it, Brunson's in it, OG can be in it, you know, having a point guard who's not going to turn it over so you're at least getting shots, you know, that would be a big part, a piece of the puzzle. 